Hey guys, we're back here at the CCA Workbench for the Academy Sports Rigging and Techniques. And we're talking to Ray Rocher about catching bait and getting bait in the boat and then getting them back out without tearing them all to pieces, which is usually yep. what happens on my boat. Now, yeah. when we're out there trying to catch bait, the, the main thing we're doing is using a sabiki rig, right? At and, least here in South Florida. Right, and, and what are yep. we trying to, what are our baits that we're trying to catch mostly? Bait is good. Any bait. <laughs> we like bait. Right? <laughs> Seriously, cigar minnows, sardines, goggle eyes, pilchards, threadfin herring. We have such a variety that we tend to fish like even multicolored sabiki so that we might catch a sardine on a red one or a herring on a green because we have so many different types of bait. And, and honestly, I've seen a sailfish eat everything down to a parrotfish. So, he eats everything, you know. does it? <laughs> but one thing that does not change is lively is better. Right, you want them, you, it, that's the way with any bait, yeah. like a shiner or anything. You want one that's really kicking and moving because yeah. that gets everybody's attention. Yeah. Now, first thing, when that guy reels up his sabiki rig, he wants to reel the swivel all the way up to the tip yep. so that he can swing the weight into him and grab a hold of it and put a little tension on it. And what, yeah. is that, what that does is it keeps everything straight, keeps all those little tiny hooks from mm -hmm. coming together. And if you lay it over the live well to let the guy who's got the D hooker in his hand put it in the live well, he doesn't have to touch it. Yep. And it falls right in. Yep. If, now, if I had it all loosey goosey, yeah, not I'd so easy. Make a big tangled mess and get every, and, and yeah. maybe even hook the poor mate because yep. I've had these things in me a hundred times. So yep. the, a bigger weight. Yeah, heavier weight helps a lot. If you've ever caught baits on a sabiki and ended up with two hooks hooked together, that meant your weight was either too light or you kept dropping after you got bit, not knowing it. Mm -hmm. I always say drop a little, come tight, drop a little more, come tight. You never want 10 seconds of slack going out because in that 10 seconds, baits could actually tangle your rig. And then when you do come tight, two hooks come together and do what I just did with a de-hooker. The two hooks hold against each other, the baits come so off. So I always thought those were just tangled up and now you're telling me I was, moved, yeah. I was missing you baits. Goofed, you goofed up somehow. Yeah, I'm sure I did. Well, the, the most important thing after you've caught the bait and you've got them in the well, you try not to damage them in any way, is right. bridling the bait. Well, how about when you get them out? I know you don't, you don't want to try to get every bait no. in your well in one scoop and then yeah. pick them out then. Yeah, whenever we, we dip baits, we try to look in the well through the top or if you have a window and try to isolate one or two or three. A wet net helps you keep a little water in the net, so if you do have two or three, they're not really rubbing the slime off each other. Right. But the so bottom once, line once is... Once you've found your target, got him up, and get yep. him in your hand, yep. we're going to put him on a, a kite bait. So yep. how do we do that? There's two ways to rig them. One is in the back like this, and one is in the nose. And I'll show you real quick. Uh, when we nose bridle a bait, mm -hmm. we use a smaller band, black or clear, doesn't matter. Hang right. on to that leader. You have a little pressure on here. Yeah, and when I put the needle through the nose, I'm basically Come up just here a little bit. I'm basically just trying to get that. Oops. Sorry. No worries. Let me try that again. Yeah, Let me try it with glasses. <laughs> that might really help. I hate to say that, aging no myself. But anyways, once the needle goes through the nose, and this time I get the band on the hook. Now you can spin that hook. I, I don't like to spin it a lot. One revolution, go back under, if you can see that. The band is positioned at the bottom of the curve of the hook. This is good for flat lining or outriggers where you're going to orient that fish horizontally. You want them to be pulling that way. Right. But when we're kite fishing, we want a little bit more of a horizontal angle to the bait. And we accomplish that, if you want to grab that leader, right. by picking a scale off See, the pick, fish. He just picked a little piece of scale off before he put the needle in. Go through the back, again, back to the hook, one revolution, go under the band, and again, have that band positioned where it's in the bottom of the curve of the hook. And the reason I hook them so far forward is if you're fighting a fish, great time to hook a second fish because you're in the zone. But when you're moving the boat, whether you're drifting because of high winds or you're bumping the boat ahead chasing a fish, mm -hmm. the further forward that hook is hooked in the back, the more horizontally oriented that bait will be. He'll present better, get bit more. If you hook him here by the dorsal, that's what he's going to look like when you're dragging him. He'll, he'll be all turned over like a rattle trap. Right, exactly. And, and he won't look as natural. Right. We get more bites by nose or far forward in the back. Now, it, does it does it matter if you're using a, a, putting a big, powerful bait like a goggle eye? Is there anything that you do differently? Or is same. It's all the same. Yep. And, and you would just want to keep everything tight? Yep. Try not to squeeze the bait too hard. When we do hold a bait, we try to put pressure on the back and the belly. That's a much more, uh, I guess, less damaging position to put your hand. If you hold them like this, uh -huh. Your finger, when you let that bait go, they'll just be glitter in the water because you've moved a lot of scales. Not right. so good for the durability of that bait. See, I got scales in my hand just doing yeah. that. Yeah. Now, we were talking earlier about pinned baits. Mm -hmm. What are the advantages of kept, catching a whole bunch of bait and then putting them in a pin? 
Well, anytime you can put bait in a pin, you're gonna have money in the bank, I call it. You got bait <laughs> sitting in the well, it allows you to make Getting your- Get fat. Yeah, well, you're also able to go fishing maybe with shorter notice. You don't have to think about catching bait to go fishing if, if you're in a live bait fishery, like we are here in South Florida. And, and, and actually, sometimes bait's easier to catch in calm conditions, but when you wanna go fishing three days later or a week later, maybe it's rough, them. you wouldn't be able to catch them. So that's the benefit, and that's why we use a de-hooker, that's why we use soft nets, and bait pins and fish food. You know, we're trying to be able to have that bait stored, and as it stores, it gets stronger. Turn them into a Samson in there. That's it. All right, man. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming, Thank man. You. I appreciate it.